Shit, on me, on me, on me, on me. Whew. Sorry, everyone. I'm a little late. I apologize. I was out with the band we were strumming. As you can see, I'm holding the guitar. We were just putting our album together. We're trying to get the finishing touches. It's been a long process. But anyways, you don't need to know about that. That's not what you're here for. You're here because today is that day of the week. We're here to talk about movies. We're here to talk about what I just recently watched a couple of days ago. So to make things short and sweet, we're going to be talking two different films today. Uh, both featuring or both taking place in the horror genre. Uh, I know Halloween was last week, so I took last week uh, the time to watch a couple of horror films, or you can call them murder mystery, depends on how you're looking at it. The two films we're talking about right off the bat, Summer of 84, it's a little low budget in the film, you may have not have heard of it, and uh, Ghost Stories, another one of those films that you may not have heard of, but that's besides the case, you're about to hear about them, I'm going to talk to you about them, because it, it's not about just talking about indie films, it's also, also just about talking about Hollywood films, blockbuster films, and etc, and etc. I know a lot of people are like, oh, he's not talking about mainstream movies, I've never heard of this. Well, I'm here to inform you that there are other films out there than just the mainstream garbage that Hollywood keeps producing. I'm not, and I'm also not shitting on what Hollywood does. They do put out some quality films. But around this time of year, the stuff that they're promoting, the stuff that they're pushing, and the marketing that they're doing, the commercialization of everything, nothing ends up really living up to the expectations of what the audience are hoping for. I Take The Nun, for example. They got ravaged by reviews. I have yet to see this film. I may eventually check it out. But this is one of those films that was not... The critics were not too kind towards. And same with people who have seen this film. I spoke to dozens of people who have checked this film out and the reviews have been mixed and there have been more negative than there have been a positive. So this is the reason as to why I discuss films like Summer of 84, Ghost Story, The Night That Comes For Us, uh, Mile 22. I know that was kind of a Hollywood-esque film, but no one really saw it, so we'll call it low budget. Uh, 10 by 10, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I talk about these films because these are the films that deserve the most attention over the ones that you constantly see commercials of when you're watching TSN, CBS, NBC, and ABC. All right, that's the simple reason and the matter of fact because there are more films out there than the films that you actually know about. So if I can educate you and if I can inspire you to want to check these films out, good. That is what I'm hoping for hoping to accomplish. Uh, let's get things rolling. Let's let's start things off. We're talking summer of 84. The sheriff's office reports they're likely looking for a white male. Preferred targets appear to be males aged 12 to 16. Summer of 84 is a independent low budget film. It's not one of those films that you'll hear about um, through the break lines. Hell, it's not even one of those films that features any big name actors or big name directors. This is the kind of film that was directed by the likes of Francois Simard, Anouk Wiesel, and her brother or boyfriend, Johan Carl Wiesel. These are three directors, three up and coming director, up and coming directors, and they did a phenomenal job with the film that they had in summer of '84. The actors that took place, that took part in this film, I'm going to try not to butcher their names because, like I said, these are unknown, still up-and-coming actors. You've probably seen them in a couple of shows and a couple of low-budget films, but they have yet to break it into the Hollywood scene. The main actor in this film was Graham Brashear. Outside of Graham, we have Judah Lewis, we have Caleb Emery, we have Corey Grutar Andrew, and the female protagonist of this film, Tara Escofobia. For certainly butchered the shit out of this name, but she does a phenomenal job with the screen time that she is given in this film, and playing the police officer Wayne Mackey, Rich Summer. Now I know a lot of these people, you've probably never heard of them. The acting was incredible, but the question is, what is Summer of '84 about? Well, Summer of '84, just from the title, takes place in the summer of 1984, uh, or Christmas time, because Christmas does come into play near the end of the the film. So it's kind of funny how that that works out. But Summer of 84 is a murder mystery about a serial killer that obviously in, in these types of films it takes place in a small town where everyone knows one another, neighbors know each other, they know each other well enough that they trust one another. So it becomes a question of who done it? Who is the serial killer? Because it comes back that it turns out that someone living in this small town happens to be the serial killer that they've been looking for, that the police have been searching for. Over the course of the film, uh, Graham's character ends up taking an interest in the police officer, Wayne Mackey, 
um, and, 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 and an interest in the terms of that he starts to believe that it may be the police officer Wayne who is actually the serial killer. Once Graham's character start, starts to suspect that it may be Wayne who is the serial killer, uh, it, the film takes a turn and starts to, to, to turn towards the direction of detective work. Now you start to watch him, Graham and his friends, putting together an elaborate plan on to capture or to ca catch on tape or to get actually some evidence on what this Wayne character is doing. Now throughout the film there are tons of tons of foreshadowing towards uh, Wayne's character. There's a lot of presentation to do to put the emphasis that this is the suspect that we want you to believe is the individual who is actually the serial killer. Uh, throughout the film there's a lot going on that makes you question who which character has done it. Uh, like I said the emphasis that they try to the push towards you is the fact that it is the police officer who is covering it all up and doing the serial killing and doing the murders. The film does a good job of making you wonder up until the very end, which is why I'm not going to give away who is actually the serial killer. It's one of those things that once it occurs, it is so mind-boggling, it is so shocking to see this character's turn from this nice guy individual to suddenly this real savage, disturbing individual who has a scene with Graham's character where he sits with him, uh, this is near the end, where he sits with Graham's character after everything has gone down and he tells him and he warns him that for the rest of your life you will be looking over your shoulder and it is a sequence that is shot in such a way that there are no quick cuts. Once again my favorite thing is when there's no quick cuts and it's solely focused on the dialogue, the emotion and the characters expressions that they are giving when they are being warned, warned by, by such a violent individual by such a scary individual and it puts fear in not only the character but also in yourself and because you, you picture yourself in Graham's shoes and wondering what would you do in this instance when you're having someone threaten you in such a way where he's saying he's not going to murder you but he is going to make you wait and wonder when something is going to come. It's one of these magnificent scenes where the, the dialogue is finely written it is not silly, it's not jumpy, it's not something that you're going to laugh at and be like, oh, what a stupid mind. No, everything from the three directors, from the two writers, everything that went down and what was put on page, at times does feel, outside of this scene, a little bit cliched or a little bit silly, but keep in mind that this film takes place in 1984. Therefore, everything that you see, the soundtrack, uh, the clothes, the way the characters act, the way the characters speak, this is a homage to the way the 1980s were. This is a feel, you get the same feel that you get for Stranger Things in terms of the soundtrack, in terms of the character style, and in terms of the way the characters speak to one another. This brings all of that together, wraps it up nicely in a film that is only about an hour and 40 minutes long. It's not even that, that long. And not only is it not that long, it is quickly paced. But not quickly paced to the point where you're kind of like, wow, they just got me to the ending. No, everything is, nice, is nicely, tightly knit together, that every moving part has a specific reason, has a specific explanation. And once the ending comes, you feel satisfied with the twist, where you're questioning everything that's going on, where you're playing a game of Clue, basically. Who is the guy that's doing the killings? Who's the one that's kidnapping the children? Who is the suspect? Who is the murderer? It becomes a game of who is, like I said. And, and the, the directors do a phenomenal job at covering it up and leaving it until the very end, where it is revealed. Uh, who, who the individual is. Um, so that's one of those things that I loved about this film. The acting by everyone involved uh, was, was tremendous. They brought their A-level to this film. No one seemed as if they were walking through the motions. And, and this is what I love about independent and low-budget film, is that everyone is on board because they love the source material that they have been given. It's not one of those things where they take something and they're doing it for the love, for the money. They're doing this because it's for the love of the project. It has the scares. It has the occasional action violence sequence that does occur near the end of the film. The majority is all built up. It's built into who's done it. You've got the, the children having going about their business and setting up the trap, setting up the plan on how to capture and how to get the, the necessary evidence to bring to the police's attention that this is the individual, that this is the serial killer. So it's nice to see that, you know, when you're younger you have this idea in your mind that this is that when you're when you're set that this is something is something that's the kind of, this is what the film does it takes Graham's character and it puts it in his mind that the boy the, the police officer Wayne is the one who has, is the one basically so you get to see when someone has tunnel vision how that may affect 
their decisions in life, how that affects their friendships, how that affects the, the ongoing communication with the family. Because now you're getting everyone involved. You're, you're accusing someone who's a neighbor who's a friend of the family. And it causes tension. So this is what that film does nicely. It wraps all of that up and it gives you one of the most satisfying endings I have seen to date. Summer of 84. It is a film that is worth a 7.5 on 10. If there is one negative about this film, it is the female character who is not given much to do. This female love interest. She appears um, here and there in the film and is not very necessary to be honest. Had she been given a bigger role than what she was given, then fantastic. I would have been on board. I would have thought she was the, the fantastic. I would have thought that she would have played a bigger part than what she had for someone who was this guy's dream girl. So someone that this girl fantasizes over. Hell, for someone who lives next door to this boy, you would have thought she would have been there more than she was. Say for the example of the film uh, with Shia LaBeouf, Disturbia, where the neighbor next door, he's in love with her, right? And she comes on board with this murder mystery. Where do you, where do you believe it is the neighbor, who actually I think was a police officer too in this film, um, that was doing some, that was murdering and kidnapping and etc. She played such a, fan, a big role that she was Shia LaBeouf's secondary character. In this film, she's not even a secondary character. She's barely even a fourth character. She's barely even in the film. I feel she brought a lot, a lot to the table, but was very underutilized. So that is my only real critique of this film. Had she been there more than she was, I would have been happier. But she did feel underutilized to the point that you probably could have cut her scenes out. Uh, she didn't play much of an impact. Let's move on to ghost stories. This is something else that I was very pleasantly surprised at how good this film was.